I'm standing today in Fountain Hills, which is a city northeast of Phoenix, which is home to the world famous fountain. The fountain goes up to 560 feet high. It was built in 1970, and at that time was the world's tallest fountain. It's still one of the world's tallest fountains. Um, it goes higher than the Washington Monument. It goes higher than most of the um, Egyptian pyramids. It also uh, goes three times as high as Old Faithful in uh, Yellowstone. It's very impressive. I've been, it's supposed to go off every hour from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. I've been here for three hours. It's gone off for eight seconds. So I think there's a problem with the world famous fountain. But regardless, it's very impressive when it does go, uh, go off. The topic for today that I want to discuss is Marinol. Marinol is the only synthetic THC that is available for prescription use in the United States at this point. Obviously marijuana naturally is an illegal uh, substance federally um, and it's classified as a Schedule I narcotic by the DEA. So it's very difficult to do research for it. Um, 15 states, including Arizona, have now legalized medical marijuana for certain conditions. Arizona did this in November of 2010, and now in April 2011, they're actually instituting the final rules and regulations for patient ID cards and consumption medicinally um, and so forth. Marinol itself was approved back in 1985 uh, by the FDA for one indication for reduction and prevention of nausea and vomiting due to cancer chemotherapy. And it works well for that. In 1992, the company Unimed reapplied to the FDA to get an additional indication, which is for HIV and AIDS patients for prevention of the cachexia muscle wasting, which is where they lose lean body um, muscle mass and tissue. And it works really well for that too. The story of how they did this is remarkable. The FDA approves products, uh, medications in three phases. After animal studies, it goes into clinical studies in humans. First phase is when the um, company like Unimed submits an investigational new, d new drug application and the FDA has 30 days to approve or deny that or ask for more information. If they don't deny it, it moves forward into phase one. Phase one is sm uh, small trials of healthy volunteers who don't even have the disease in question to make sure that the drug is safe and doesn't have huge side effects. After that, it moves into phase two, which is patients who have the disease process in question, and it's a small trial looking at, at its effectiveness. If that does well, it moves into phase three, which is a large trial looking at all kinds of patients who have the disease around the country or at wherever the research centers are and deeming whether or not it is effective. That is what Unimed did, but they did it in a way that didn't cost them the normal 200 to 600 million dollars that a normal drug costs to get approved. That is a tremendous amount of money for a pharmaceutical company to have to spend and only one in five medications actually makes it to the finish line. So in looking at that, it should develop a whole new level of respect for the pharmaceutical companies that are making medications that can help extend life and make life more comfortable and save lives. People think of pharmaceutical companies as big fat cats because they make millions and billions of dollars, but when you talk about putting that money back into research and development along with the FDA, it's just such a huge amount of money that goes back to it to try and, and do these things. Yes, they're a business, but they're also in the business of saving lives. So I had a whole new level of respect for them and for Unimed. Unimed is the company that developed Marinol and brought it to market. But what they did in the 1970s was the National Cancer Institute did a bunch of research on marijuana. And they showed that it did well for nausea and vomiting and for muscle wasting. It helped prevent it. Unimed used that research for the FDA. So they didn't have to spend the 200 to 600 million dollars. They did some of their own research, but they kept their price tag low. Instead of the average of five years that it takes to get a medical uh, drug approved, they did it in two because of what the National Cancer Institute handed to them that was available in the public. Beautiful thing, excellent business decision, pat on the back, I'd love to meet the team that did that. Or maybe it was one person. That was back in 1985. So they got an indication. Now, 
when you have an indication, that means that goes on the label. That means it's an on-label indication for that, that medication. You can use it off-label. Physicians do that all the time in this country, thousands of times a day. But for the drug to be marketed by the company for another indication, you need to go back to the FDA and get that approved. That's what uh, Unimed did back in 1992 with Marinol for AIDS patients. It, that cost them $5 million to run more small clinical trials and do all the paperwork and talking to the FDA. Doing that bumped up their sales by about 20% probably. Another genius move by Marinol. Marinol's revenues are probably much, much, much less than your average pharmaceutical, but when you talk about the return on investment of what they did, genius. So at any, any rate, a little bit about dronabinol, which is the, uh, what do you call it, the generic um, name for, for Marinol. It is a synthetic THC. It's made in a lab. It is uh, greasy, so it doesn't do well in water, which means it doesn't get well absorbed in the GI system. Also, the liver of a patient thinks that dronabinol is a contaminant. It fights to try and get it out of the bloodstream. So at the end of the day, so to speak, only about 10% of Marinol actually gets used in humans. So it's not the most effective delivery system when you're talking about intake through the GI system. It's taken by mouth, by capsule. It's available in multiple concentrations. And it is a um, long duration of action, four to eight hours. So when you compare that to natural marijuana, there are some pros and cons. The pros is that it's federally legal and prescription available, Marinol. Natural marijuana, federally illegal, and now medicinally legal in 15 states, including Arizona, for multiple conditions. So, you know, you have a little bit of a um, six of one, you know. But natural marijuana has multiple compounds in it. Dronabinol is one compound, just one. So if you have to take multiple medications to control various side effects of whatever the disease is in question, as opposed to smoking or vaporizing marijuana naturally for five different disease processes, is that better? It may be. Natural marijuana is good for anxiety, nausea and vomiting, uh, prevention of um, weight loss. It can help with your appetite and certain like chemotherapy, things like that, AIDS, AIDS patients. Uh, it can help with glaucoma, it can help with severe muscle spasms, chronic pain, those types of things. Whereas Marinol is one compound and it is good for limited types of things. So there's definite pros and cons there. Cost, you know, Unimed tries to tell you that Marinol does cost about $200 a month for a typical patient. That is true, um, but when you look at the cost effectiveness of that versus natural marijuana, natural marijuana covers a, quite a few different symptoms and side effects as opposed to being just one compound. So then again, you have to weigh Marinol plus other medications that a patient needs versus maybe just uh, one, which would be vaporized or smoked marijuana. So that's something to, to think about in a qualifying uh, patient. Anyway, that's how Marinol came to be. I think it was a genius move on Unimed, the way that they did it. Um, and hopefully it will pave the way for additional uh, development of further substances from um, marijuana that can be used. Um